Remember we covered this story where this guy just uh, brutally killed this uh, young woman in Egypt purely because uh, she had said no to him? Um, yeah. Yeah, so that, that, that's only a few weeks old. And there's an update on that. So the Egypt okay. Egyptian court calls for live TV hanging Oof. of the killer who, st- who stabbed a woman for rejecting him. So there's a so, live TV hanging, you know. Yeah, this is the guy. Looks like he's been beaten up. You can see that. Um, so an Egyptian court has called for a murderer to be executed on live TV, according to reports. Mohammed a- Adel, 21, was convicted of killing fellow student Naira Ashraf outside Mansoura University in northern Egypt last month. He was sentenced to death on 28th of June at Mansoura court. Oh, hang on. I, damn it. I didn't know that one. Ah, uh, fine. Okay. Um, I'm yeah, I know in. the independent does that. Yeah. yeah, I'm not logged in. Anyway, so so anyway, oh, that's uh, um, crazy. Like a live TV hanging, televised hanging. Yeah. Um, that's like like even a step further than like Pakistan. You know, when they say like do it like out in the open on the streets, and like what they do in Saudi Arabia as well for the beheadings and amputations like an open space where people can watch if they want to but live tv yeah so an egyptian court has called for the execution of a young man to be broadcast live the condemned was convicting of stabbing his classmate in mansura university in a, Ju- in a july 24 letter to the egyptian parliament the mansura criminal court requested a legal amendment be made to allow the execution to be aired live on television a broadcast only if only even if only a part of the start of the proceedings could achieve the goal of deterrence. These people just don't get it, and I'm going to talk about it. Which which was not achieved by broadcasting the sentencing itself. On June 20, a chilling video footage showed Mohammed Adel kill Nair Ashraf at the university campus. So this video, uh, I think a lot of people have seen that video. According to local reports, she had been uh, about to sit for a final exams when he stabbed her several times in front of onlookers and nobody actually came to rescue her. I think it took uh, until it was fatally too late. The court's request was met with mixed reactions in Egypt. Some observers have expressed support of the idea to air the execution in the name of retribution, and others argue that it would only spread violence in the community. That part, they just don't get it. A pro- uh, Ahmed Shakwi Abu Khatwa, a professor of criminal law and former dean of the faculty of law Mansoura university total monitor the court requested the legislature to introduce an amendment to the penal code to allow the broadcasting of the death penalty it is imperative to have a legal text to allow this in my opinion this is not a very pleasant thing to do never has a death sentence been carried out in public in modern egypt since the law of 1937 Ooh, they've been modernized for quite some time nearly a nearly a or we'll carried out in public, though, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, 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 yeah, no, but that's the first step. Meaning Egypt's penal code. I don't believe that telecast. Now it's like... will... No, I don't think it's going to happen. There's just a suggestion by the court. I, I don't believe that telecasting the execution will deter others, but rather leave the public numb to the sight of violence and exactly. entrench the idea of revenge. This is not the desired effect that the court wants yeah. to achieve. So, um, so that, so I, I just wanted to talk about. You know why that mentality? Because we see that time and time again in countries like Pakistan as well. They say, let's bring back public executions. In Afghanistan, Taliban have been doing it for quite some time. Uh, Even the first stint. Iran still executes people publicly. Saudi Arabia still executes people publicly. And if you actually have a look, the rate of crime, and I've said it before, uh, the homicide rate in Saudi Arabia is higher than that of Japan, far bigger country. And there's no uh, public executions in Japan. Um, so so, so the, why, why does that thought come? Where does that thought come from? It seems rational that if you do these violent, um, if you carry out these violent practices of executions publicly, that people would get scared. But it just doesn't happen. I'll give I'll give all the Muslims a, a, a little practical experiment. Like a lot of these animals get slaughtered in the in Karit, the, the one that just went past. 
Uh, if you actually look at those kids, and, and I noticed that because I grew up in Pakistan and I saw animals getting executed, and by the end of it, like I, it just didn't do anything for me. Like It, it had just become entertainment, kind of like gladiators in Colosseum. It's like you're just seeing life. You're desensitized. Death. You're desensitized. Mm. But then I moved to Australia, and I never saw anyone getting hurt, and then I saw, you know, like here you can't even kill snakes you can't even you know kill spiders it's not it's not considered good and then and then you own a pet and then you say oh you know like you feel the pain of an animal why because you you, you are resensitized and you you forget about uh this violence that it, that was so normalized to you so it just doesn't work you can carry out that experiment yourself we actually had a caller here a muslim caller who said that i showed the slaughter of my goat uh, in, in, that, in that eat that just went past and he was crying he was saying my, my daughter is damaged by it she's she's hurt and i she she felt sick after that and because she hadn't seen it up until that point but i guarantee you if she sees it every year she wouldn't even care so that's what happens that in these barbaric societies where executions are carried out publicly nothing good comes out of it crime never goes down but so that's one aspect of it they think that if if people see it then people won't do it but there's another aspect of it. I think they think that, what have we done wrong? We have this perfectly or close to perfection. Our society is so much better than the Western society. Our women are, are covered up with whatever their definition of covering up is. Um, everything is fine. We have told our men that, you know, don't look at women, but they still do. Rape is bad. But why is this still happening? Because that's the wrong prognosis as well. You don't reduce crime against women by putting them in bin bags. It just doesn't work. That's, again, a wrong solution. So you've created a society on, 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 on pathetic principles, and they are not working. So when they don't work, when they don't work, instead of admitting that, hey, your, your principles were faulty, that's why they're not working. That's why we're creating an army of sexually frustrated men who, who do these kind of things despite of everything, as, we, as I showed you the video before of um, uh, of a man and walking, woman walking past, perfectly fine in a burqa, and he gropes her. So it's them denying that, the, that the principles that they founded their society on are, are uh, just not good enough. And that's the reason they say, so there must be something else. Let's just bring in harsher punishments. Every culture has done that. Every culture thinks, even in the time of Muhammad, the people, I've got so many hadiths where Muhammad stoned people to death. Um, and uh, people knew at that point, Nuria, you and I, because we are so averse to violence, you and I would probably think, okay, if you're around Taliban, don't do, uh, don't have an uh, extramarital affair. You know, not that we would have it here either, but I'm just saying we would think that don't have it because, yeah, that's brutal. But if you start seeing this in life and death becomes so normal and such a brutal, violent way, then, you know, it's just, it just it, 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 it doesn't mean anything anymore. Yeah. And like, you know, in these countries where we see like some of these most like horrific, brutal crimes, um, yes, like obviously that needs to be addressed and like that person or the per perpetrator needs to be brought to justice. But a lot of these countries who still like think that the answer is, oh, let's let's hang them in public, let's execute them publicly, let's televise it. Like they really need to stop and think about like just criminal justice in itself and like the concept of retribution because like even these organizations who are working on the front lines to deal with like, you know, victims on death row and things like that, they, they've come to say they've published so many papers and like, you know, policy, policy guidance stating that the capital punishment is not a deterrent. And especially like if it's just out there in the public, that is just, again, as we said, it's, it's a form of desensitization as opposed to anything. So there's no credible evidence that like, the death penalty or capital punishment deters crime um, more effectively than like just long terms of imprisonment or life imprisonment, um, which is what most of these cases should get. So countries and like even states within countries that have capital punishment actually don't have lower crime rates or murders than like states or countries that don't have uh, capital punishment. And like when somebody is about to go and commit one of these crimes, they like if you're going to do this, you're either just you're not thinking straight anyway so you're not you don't expect to be caught 
or you're not sitting there contemplating the differences between like being executed or being given the electric chair or being put in life imprisonment. That's just not the way that human psychology works when somebody is like out there with the intent to kill or the intent to commit a crime. Um, so yeah, it's just, I mean, it, it, it really, if you look at like the rescindance late rates in the Nordic countries and just their, their idea of criminal justice and like how to rehabilitate and, and reintegrate people into society, even in England, I mean, our criminal just justice system is far from perfect, but the, the, the actual benchmark is that we want people to be out of prison for as long as possible and be re re rehabilitated in society as quick as possible. Um, so the whole concept is like just the welfare of the public and society. And that's why, you know, things like this, this capital punishment and stuff we've moved away from because it's the idea of reintegration and things like that. Instead of just violence, violence, you know, like kind of desensitize people, give them the most gruesome punishment and that will instill fear so nobody will commit crimes. There are thousands of stats to show that's not how it works. Look at this country, like I said, Japan has 0 0.02 murders per 100,000, 0 0.02, like so low that it, you have to round it up to zero. And it used to yeah. be one, um, uh, you know, that this is in, in, in 1990s, and it's constantly coming down. Look at, look, look at this graph. And Saudi Arabia is also showing one um, per 100,000. I think that's just, uh, let's have a look. I like Saudi Arabia is showing. Saudi Arabia made a homicide rate. Jesus Christ, why did I have to do this? 2019 was 0.83, a 25% increase from 2018 so that's gone up a little bit but again you say that it's low but th th this is a a, um, a a country that that has public execution but at the same time there are other countries that don't have public executions and they have achieved the same level in the in, in the same one that if i show you uh countries violent countries like S sudan and uh, so, there's so many other factors uh, afghanistan so where is afghanistan look at australia australia is one no public executions um bahamas oh that's a bit high i wonder what, what's going on there um where's afghanistan there should be there i'm sure that'd be very high oh there it is top seven so taliban have bullets straight to your head but this is probably 2018 so this is pre uh, taliban time um but but i i, I wouldn't be surprised if it, if it stays there where's iraq iraq is 10 I don't think they have public executions. Where, where's Iran? Iran's got two. So even if you want to say, fair enough, this is actually low. But if you want to say that, okay, the public executions are keeping people, the, these rates low, then you have to explain why countries like Japan, Norway, Australia, why, why are these countries so low as well? There is Norway's one. It's the same as Saudi Arabia. There's no public executions there. So uh, it doesn't it doesn't do anything. In, in, but one thing I can tell you that you would rather live in Norway or Japan than Saudi Arabia or Iran. Why? Because with public executions, there is the, uh, the overall uh, the atmosphere would be that of terror, wouldn't it? Like you, you, you I, I would I would rather have a higher risk of death than live in prison like Saudi Arabia or Iran. And, and that is, I'm saying it as a man. Imagine what it would be for women. Yeah. This one is an example that even at the time of Muhammad, I'm just quickly going to go through. The, this is a, uh, that infamous hadith where during the pre-Islamic period, I saw a she monkey surrounded by a number of monkeys and they were all stoning the monkey because she had committed illegal sexual intercourse. So I too stoned it along with them. This is Amar bin Maimun. <laughs> I was just going to say when you were mentioning the stoning punishments, I was like, do you remember where they got it from? <laughs> what they <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Literally so, uh, a bunch of monkeys. There, there it is. So the Prophet stoned two Jews, and I was among those who stoned them. So, so at the time of Muhammad, people were getting, um, you know, stoned people were death. getting stoned to death, and it, it doesn't show any indication that, that that went down. So this is another one with the, with, with the Jews. Like there was this Jew, uh, he was brought to, you know, uh, why have you? Um, he, he had committed illegal, out of wedlock sex. Um, he was an adulterer. So he, they said, this is actually funny and sad at the same time. They said, show me, um, what, what is the punishment for it? He goes, oh, in our, in our um, religion, uh, punishment is nothing. I think you should have said, I'm an atheist. <laughs> then he was like, definitely there's nothing in atheist. The, uh, so he said, oh, in Torah, no, 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 there's nothing. Uh, no, no punishment for us. Just let us go. So Muhammad said, okay, well, bring the Torah here. And then he said, look, look. And he puts a finger 
on the part where it says stone them. So he goes, this other clever Sahaba goes, no, 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 lift your finger. He lifts his finger and he goes, oh, stone them. And then they then they actually ended up stoning uh, him and the woman. And, and and the poor guy was actually, uh, what was uh, protecting was he was trying to shield her. Oh. That just shows um, that, that with his body. But then Muhammad said, don't, don't take pity on them. <sighs> there's, a, there's another one, Bukhari. Nice. There's so many. There's so many others where you know the Rajan penalty. Muhammad stoned so many, so many of these people. So, so that shows that despite a very brutal punishment, people were still doing it. They, 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 they kept doing these things. Yeah. To help me produce more videos like these, support me on Patreon or PayPal.